We've been speaking in the last week about deaths at initiation schools in the Eastern Cape in particular, and we're hearing that the deaths have now risen to 30. We were reporting 23 just last week, and over 80 are being treated at hospitals in the Eastern Cape, while December marks the summer season for the usually two-month-long rite of passage. The point of the rite of passage is for young men, teenagers, to transition from young men into manhood, where they're believed to be taught, or they're said to be taught, about manhood during this period. Now, previously, the Deputy Minister for Cooperative Governance, Obed Babela, criticized the Eastern Cape for not revealing statistics pertaining to the initiation deaths in that province. To speak about whether any of those initiatives have actually worked, let's speak now to the Deputy Minister for Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Obed Babela. Minister, a very good evening to you. Deputy Minister, a very good evening to you. Welcome to the program. So, we speak about initiatives that have been announced in the past, but if 30 young men lie dead tonight, they clearly aren't working as they should. Definitely, it's a regrettable incident that is occurring, particularly in the Eastern Cape where we are seeing 30 deaths and then one death uh, in the Northern Cape. So the all in all is 31 now. And uh, the minister, Nkosa Zanadla Minizuma, did release a statement last week to say he also uh, pays condolences to the families that have lost their dear loved ones. And culture and tradition should be protected, but not to kill our children. We, we are definitely uh, saddened by this incident as the Department of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs. Every year, Minister, the department is saddened. Every year, there's condemnation. Every year, there are pledges to do more to protect these boys and young men who go to the mountain during this time and in the winter initiation period. Yet every year, we bury dozens of them. Why are the interventions not working? The, the interventions are working as far as legal schools are concerned, where the establishment of the schools is known by the communities, the parents are involved uh, of those children and the traditional leaders are involved. And, and, and therefore, the government is involved to work together towards the preparations of the season. Everything is, is, is going well. The problem arises when illegal initiation schools arises and they just mushroom across the country in uh, isolated areas in the bushes, in some mountain areas, without anybody knowing, and these children will just be taken there, sometimes without the consent of the parents themselves, children just disappear. And majority of the deaths that had occurred even now uh, uh, arises from these illegal schools, and, and the law was not as strong towards that direction, and the law has just been passed this year in 2021, it's now going towards it being operationalized, hoping therefore that from next year and the years that follows, we'll be able to clamp down on any illegal schools because the law says they must be arrested, those mm. who run this type of schools, because in the past we'll fund them, we'll rescue the children, and then these people then get arrested, but then the following day they are free people because the law was not uh, indicative as to what punishment should then happen. And we hope, therefore, that we've got the law now on our side. And mm -hmm. going forward, uh, the, we will hope we'll be able to stem and then and really cut uh, these particular illegal schools from killing our children. But the lack of adequate legislation to deal with this, uh, Deputy Minister, is also a problem that points to a failure of leadership in the legislature where you as government officials sit because i'll give you a statistic that was brought up by the daily dispatch in the eastern cape just this week in fact last week they said that 858 eastern cape boys have died at these initiation schools in 15 years that comes up to 57 young men and boys every year so how is it that all these years later we're still sitting here without sufficient legislation, as you are telling me? Well, remember, in South Africa, to come up with a law, uh, it takes two to three years. And, and obviously, there was this three-year period where research has to be done and new legislation has to be enacted. And then it has to go through cabinet, from cabinet to parliament. Parliament must go to communities, must go to all provinces, from the National Assembly to the 
to the uh, NCOP and also NCOP gating provincial mandate. But finally this year, the president ascended to, to the law in April and, and, and therefore we have the law that has just started in the 1st of September. But it should have been uh, in place sooner condition. is the point I'm trying to make. It well, sh cultural it initiation I mean, bill is now in place. Yeah. I'm pointing to a, a tally that's been put together for a 15-year period, right? And even if the process takes, as you're saying, let's say three years, there had already been hundreds of young men who were dead before that. Why wasn't this done in the first five years when we got an indication that we were dealing with a potential crisis here where young men who, are, who go who undergo a traditional rite of passage, were hoping to come back and live their lives and make it back in a body bag. Yeah. Well, uh, let me just be specific. I mean, yes, it's 15 years uh, based on research. And at that time, we thought that uh, by just engaging and collaborating and working together as communities, as traditional leaders, as government, as my local government, together we will be able to arrest this thing until when it was evident that it is in the illegal schools where things were happening, where uh, people will just establish schools and, 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 and then even in mining, dumping mining areas, uh, if you remember, in, in, in Raute. So when that then we realized it's happening within that period, that is when we then started, we need a law because the police said that we arrest them, but there's nothing in the statute that says we must sentence them and so forth. We can only, if there's a death, it's only when you can charge a person with death. But sometimes it's not directly linked to the person who was the initial, uh, who was running the school, because you will then do whatever they, 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 they do with circumcision, and then leave the children unattended, and then there will be at least, uh, certain elements then have been blood. Uh, bleeding then leads to death, dehydration leading to death. It will be another cause, and which is not directly linked mm. to the circumcision itself, but in, it happens in that particular environment. Hence, we then had to go and look at the law. When I say three years, it was the three years of the passage of the law. But before the three years is the research, is then also finding mechanism and also learning. What is it that we could do? And illegal schools, if they can be abolished, no longer be there, you will see that this uh, culture can be preserved, can be protected, and then deaths will be minimal or not at all, mm. because the aim is to have zero deaths, obviously. And, and then therefore the law is new. Now we have the law. We are more emboldened and definitely will be going on to ensure therefore that the implementation of the law succeeds the from the year 2022. The problem, though, with the law, while it's appreciated, is that it relies on tragedy to occur and then punishment for the people running the illegal school. What we are missing, from my sense at least, is a preventative measure, something to intervene before a young man is maimed or worse, dead. I fully agree with you. And hence, there's a passage in the law around taking... And, and, and awareness and educational programs, going to all the schools in the villages across the country, going to communities, talking to the parents, talking to the teachers, talking to everybody that cares to say, we love this culture, you love the culture yourselves, let's take responsibility and let's then begin to protect it, all of us. And there's that particular chapter in the law that says that the department nationally must do, working with the provincial departments, uh, with the MECs in all provinces, really embarking on that massive uh, campaigning education and awareness mm. so that all of us can then know what are the do's and the don'ts, and then those who are taking chances being identified, or they will then retreat so that then we can clean that environment. Yes, mm. we cannot wait for the law, to something to happen and the law to kick in. It's a, it's a process. Is, I'd like to ask you, pardon me, Deputy Minister, we're just running out of time as we climb up to the bottom of the hour, but there are reports in the last two days of dozens of young men being abducted, essentially, and forced to go to initiation schools in Sidibeng. It's not a new phenomenon in Gauteng. Are you aware of that situation? Have you been briefed? We, we are aware, and the, the, the Commission for the Religious and Linguistic is already working on investigating that again in Gauteng. 
but they will also be meeting with the Eastern Cape uh, MEC tomorrow uh, in the Eastern Cape to also begin to see what is it else that they, they can help. And then based on what they did in Routing 1, remember they did ban it for some period until the leadership responsibility is put together to take responsibility. So those abductions are still happening, the kidnapping is still happening in the Igorolweni and in the city bank. We are aware of that and the police are also working on tracking and then finding these children and arresting those who are kidnapped because in their law is brought in now to say to take a child to an initiation with, without uh, consent of the parents or the consent of the children themselves is now punishable by law. And is the objective from the kidnappers in these cases, because they're not new, is it usually profit to make money? Well, that is another challenge uh, uh, that has arisen. The commercialization of the culture where people just do it for money. They are no longer doing it for the pride and really for uh, a passage from boyhood to, to manhood. And then they will then begin to look at how much boys I can get so that I can get a lot of money. Even that is also expressed in the law, the Cultural Initiation uh, Act that says uh, we should not be commercializing and even put in the standardization of what should be uh, the, 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 the ornaments that gets given to the person that runs. It shouldn't be monetary. It should be the way culture used to be. But obviously, parents do spend a bit of money preparing uh, already from the home itself before the children are handed over to another person. Deputy Minister for Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Oda Babela, grateful for your time. So thank you for being with us tonight. Okay, thank you very much.